Dear members of the press, esteemed citizens, I greet you with my warmest feelings, respect, and love. I send my greetings and respect to all my citizens who are following us now, either in front of their screens or through digital platforms. We continue to work day and night to build the century of Turkey. Until we reach the ideal of a fairer world and a more prosperous Turkey, we will work tirelessly and without rest, inshallah. Since our last cabinet meeting, we have continued our work with an intense agenda in both domestic politics and foreign policy. On October 1st, we held the opening of the 28th term's third legislative year at the Grand National Assembly of Turkey. In my address to the Assembly, we confirmed our determination to free Turkish democracy from the shame of the coup era constitution and to bring it together with a new civilian constitution. We can clearly see every day that the current constitution imposed on our nation by the 12th of September regime at the point of a gun is insufficient for Turkey and its democracy and far from meeting the needs of Turkey despite numerous revisions. I sincerely hope that the political parties which have not been able to reach our advanced democracy target, will respond constructively to our call for a new constitution. As we have previously stated many times regarding the first four articles of the constitution, our party and the People's Alliance have no issues with them. And I want to reiterate that the discussions surrounding the first four articles do not contribute to the process. During the opening of the new legislative year, I also shared with the public the security challenges our country faces. The fire ignited by Israel's attacks on Gaza is spreading throughout the region, driven by the current government's religious fanaticism. Since October 7th, we have consistently emphasized that this issue is not just about Gaza or Hamas. The real intent is to continue the policy of occupation. We have been expressing since day one that Israel will not stop in Gaza and will set its sights on other countries in the region. We faced unjust criticisms from some of our friends and from certain factions within our country for our warnings. There were those who accused us of being fortune tellers and exaggerating the crisis, and others who charged us with politicizing foreign policy. However, the recent attacks by Israel on Lebanon once again demonstrated how right our concerns were. 
The statements from Netanyahu's cabinet clearly indicate that Israel will not be satisfied with just occupying Lebanon. The Israeli government's audacity to attack Unifil and threaten the peacekeeping forces is sufficient proof for those who still have open doors. I must also say this, a United Nations that cannot even protect its own personnel is a source of shame and concern for the international system. We are also curious about what the UN Security Council is waiting for to stop Israel. Can you imagine? Israeli tanks enter the Unifil area, attacking peacekeeping soldiers and injuring some. Yet the UN Security Council merely watches these acts of banditry from the sidelines. This is a sign of impotence of succumbing to Israeli aggression. This is why we have been saying for years that the world is greater than five. We will continue to voice the truths loudly to change this unjust picture. Dear nation, at this point we must all see this reality. As long as the Israeli government, which chases after Zionist ambitions, has the unconditional support of America and Europe, it has no intention of stopping its attacks. Our foreign and defense ministers have explained the purpose, intent, and real plans in a closed session of the assembly. Despite the barbarity that followed October 7th, we know that we cannot convince those who turn a blind eye to the threats with whatever we do. Today, we remember that those who act as Israel's voluntary spokesperson also uttered the same sentences within the Syrian branch of the separatist terrorist organization in the past. Those who reacted the most to our operations in northern Syria and Iraq to eliminate the terror threat were the same ones. Those who aim to undermine our struggle against the Fetu treason gang are not a source of faith. They are simply devoid of understanding. They live in such a dream world that they are disconnected from the realities of Turkey and are also incapable of following our region and the world. Instead of reading developments from a Turkey-centered perspective, they cannot break free from the disease of reading from a Western-centered perspective. I repeat, the ministers of defense and foreign affairs have clearly presented the picture in front of us. I leave it to the judgment of our nation, those who make the security issues of the country and the nation a subject of polemic.
without paying any heed to them. We are taking and will continue to take all necessary precautions. The higher our deterrence capability as a country, the greater our opportunities to protect ourselves from the fire in our region. We are determined to guide Turkey out of this crisis storm that is sweeping across our entire region calmly. Another urgent issue that we are closely monitoring is as follows. With the Israeli forces occupation of the Rafa border gate, unfortunately, there has been a significant decrease in the amount of aid reaching Gaza. Israel is trying to terrorize the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East, which is carrying out significant activities in the region to block aid. We are striving to deliver our aid to the needy people of Gaza using all available means before the winter season arrives. We are also evacuating our citizens in Lebanon in the face of increasing air and ground attacks. In recent days, we delivered about 300 tons of aid to the region and carried out the evacuation of a total of 966 people from the port of Beirut with our ships Bayraktar and Sankak. Our evacuation operations will continue as needed and requested. Once again, I congratulate our Naval Forces Command, AFAD, the National Intelligence Organization, and our Foreign and Defense Ministries for coordinating this process. I also leave the so-called journalists and politicians who discredit evacuation operations with racist attacks and false accusations to the conscience of our nation. Dear members of the press, we held the opening of Technofest, which has now become a brand for Turkey in Adana. The growth of Technofest since 2018, which we see as a youth epic, is a source of pride. We started with 4,333 teams and 20,000 competitors in 14 different categories. And thank God this year, we reached over 790,000 teams and over 1.65 million competitors in 50 different categories. Technofest Adana, which has been visited by many young people, has once again strengthened our hopes for the future of our country. We will continue on this path patiently until we bring Turkey to the place it deserves in defense and advanced technologies. Our nation knows very well where we have come from, despite the many open and hidden embargoes we face in the defense industry.
We are among the first 34 countries in unmanned aerial vehicles. In terms of sales of UAVs and armed drones, Turkey is at the top. Last year, 65% of global sales in this area were carried out by Turkish defense industry companies. Our defense exports reached $5.6 billion in 2023. Along with all these, we will continue to support other countries in developing their own unmanned aerial vehicles and systems as we have done with our own projects. Dear friends, Another very important issue is that this year, Turkey's and the Islamic world's first space research and exploration satellite will be launched in the second half of 2023. Additionally, we will send our own developed space rocket into space in 2024. Another space satellite we will send into space will be launched in 2025. With the education mobilization we have recently initiated, we aim to become a significant player in the space field. In the coming period, we will take all necessary steps to advance our space program. As our investments, employment and production increase, we must also carefully consider our budget. While addressing the social security deficit, we must take radical measures to solve this problem. The measures taken to reduce losses in the public sector are of great importance in establishing a healthy financial discipline, as well as ensuring that our primary aim, social assistance, reaches those in need more effectively. The savings we will make in this area will also provide us with the opportunity to use social assistance more efficiently. We need to take measures regarding social assistance to ensure that Turkey has less access to the general resources needed. Additionally, especially the inspections we will continue to carry out regarding monitoring and regulating social assistance will be conducted primarily to ensure that no one is victimized. At the same time, we aim to definitely increase the effectiveness of social assistance in the upcoming period. For this reason, we will sign a cooperation agreement between the Social Security Institution, SGK, and the General Directorate of Social Assistance and Solidarity, SYDG. In addition to those benefiting from health services, the status of individuals receiving social assistance will be monitored more effectively within the framework of this cooperation.
Thus, we will prevent losses and corruption. Our goal is to ensure that social assistance reaches those in need in a timely and accurate manner. All these efforts are for the purpose of utilizing social assistance more effectively. You know that the Republic of Turkey has fulfilled the requirements of being a social state by increasing the frequency and diversity of social assistance to its citizens. However, minimizing the lost resources during this process is of vital importance in terms of savings and efficiency. In summary, we aim to bring Turkey to a more effective and efficient point in social assistance. We must also open the way for those in need in society to see this as a right. For people whose living standards improve further, we aim for social assistance to serve as a means of help rather than being deterrent. In line with these goals, we expect the inspections conducted to improve social assistance and strengthen the management system to enhance all our social assistance processes. The speech we are making here today not only includes the measures taken for increasing the impact of social assistance on society, but also addresses how social assistance will be implemented more effectively and efficiently. All our efforts will contribute to the realization of social assistance in a more effective and efficient manner and accelerate its delivery to those in need. Valuable friends, I hope that the new legislative year will bring blessings to our country and I greet you all with my warmest feelings.